hey guys what in the world is going on in these youtube streets i'm sure you guys heard tyrese is getting a divorce honey and tyrese is calling out everybody all the men there in atlanta all the militants all the news crew the nbc <laughs> cbs um tmz you name it he wants everybody to be in the courtroom let's take a listen to what he had to say child is getting crazy okay i can't even keep up with what's going on with tyrese and this divorce jumped on real quick to discuss an invite okay i gotta be back in court about this divorce with samantha on tuesday the address where the court case is going down at is 185 Central Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia. This is me wanting to invite the press and the media. So Tyrese is inviting everybody under the sun because this is a messy divorce. He wants everybody to be there to witness what's going to go down because he says the judge is a racist judge. Okay. And he wants support from his brethren, all these guys in out there in the community, all the big wigs, all the leaders in the community. That's what Tyrese is calling for, honey. Look, what I have to say about that is divorce is usually messy. But why did it get this far? On one hand, he's saying he wants his wife. She's the one who left the relationship. She's the one who wants the divorce. She's the one who left the house. He said he didn't put her out. He still wants to work on his marriage, but they're going through a divorce. So what went wrong? And when you cut them off and you leave them cold turkey, you really fucked them up. Studies have shown. I'm like, wow. So studies have shown that you can talk about what you did to me as if you didn't do it to me? That's gaslighting as a mother. I don't think you ever loved me. It's about my ex. It's a song I never wanted to sing. I jumped on real quick to discuss an invite, okay? I gotta be back in court about this divorce with Samantha on Tuesday. The address where the court case is going down at is 185 Central Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay? Fulton County Su Superior Court. This is me wanting to invite the press and the media. Atlanta Journal... My girl Sharon Reed, all of TMZ, press, blogs, and media, this is my personal invite. Why am I doing this? I want you all to understand that there is a very big difference in somebody going into a court system as a black man and as a black father who wants nothing more than to maintain his relationship with his children. Rather, the marriage or the relationship works out or not, that's between myself and the mother of my child or my ex-wife. But when you have a racist, an obvious, blatant racist, sitting on the stand as a judge, that doesn't sit well with me. There are so many things that have happened with my case, fighting to have them to literally do what's according to the law. Nothing illegal should come in my way and nothing illegal should go her way. We want to do things according to the law. There is nothing more uncomfortable than someone who knows the law, who knows their rights. So for all of the press and media, from TMZ to Ebony to Essence and all of the other mainstream media outlets, you guys know that you have to go online and you have to file what's called a Rule 22. And when you file a Rule 22, when you're a press and a media and you're a journalist from the Atlanta Journal, the New York Times, the New York Post, TMZ, you name it, 
you are allowed to set up cameras. I don't care if it's your iPhone. I don't care if it's a camera on a tripod. You're able to set up cameras in the courtroom and you're able to film and document and write down everything that's said and everything that's going on. Now, here are the things that we're going to be discussing. We have a motion for contempt. Samantha is in contempt of court. We're going to be discussing that. We also have a special master's motion for attorney's fees. Okay? We have a special master's motion for contempt. We also have a, a motion for attorney's fees. Okay? Trying to get to the bottom of attorney's fees. Now, I want to explain one little piece about the attorney's fees. Normally, when you're a higher income earner, in the family law, they will say, look, you make more money than your, than your significant other, so financially, she should be allowed to have proper representation and have her legal fees to be paid for, too. Here's the problem. I signed a prenuptial agreement, and the prenuptial agreement clearly in all four corners of the document, a total of about 60, we put our signatures on it. We agreed that if we want to argue and go back and forth about the validity of our prenuptial agreement, then we are 100% responsible for paying and covering our own legal fees. That's what the prenuptial agreement states. So therefore, there should not be no discussion about who's paying for legal fees. Well, I'm going to have to agree with Tyrese on this. There should not be a discussion. If you sign an agreement, a written agreement, in the court of law, it should be valid. It should hold up. Now, Samantha, according to Tyrese, signed this written agreement, agreeing that if they have to discuss or go back and forth on this divorce and who gets what, then the, there's a prenup. And the prenup clearly states certain things. And she signed off. She agreed. I want y'all to understand that there is a very big difference in somebody going into a court system as a black man and as a black father who wants nothing more than to maintain his relationship with his children. Rather, the marriage or the relationship works out or not, that's between myself and the mother of my child or my ex-wife. But when you have a racist, an obvious, blatant racist sitting on the stand as a judge, that doesn't sit well with me. There are so many things that have happened with my case, fighting to have them to literally do what's according to the law. Nothing illegal should come in my way and nothing illegal should go her way. We want to do things according to the law. There is nothing more uncomfortable than someone who knows the law, who knows their rights. So for all of the press and media, from TMZ to Ebony to Essence and all of the other mainstream media outlets, you guys know that you have to go online and you have to file what's called a Rule 22. And when you file a Rule 22, when you're a press and a media and you're a journalist from the Atlanta Journal, the New York Times, the New York Post, TMZ, you name it, you are allowed to set up cameras. I don't care if it's your iPhone. I don't care if it's a camera on a tripod. You're able to set up cameras in the courtroom and you're able to film and document and write down everything that's said and everything that's going on. Now. Here are the things that we're going to be discussing. We have a motion for contempt. Samantha is in contempt of court. We're going to be discussing that. We also have a special master's motion for attorney's fees. Okay? We have a special master's motion for contempt. We also have a, a motion for attorney's fees. Okay? Trying to get to the bottom of attorney's fees. Now... I want to explain one little piece about the attorney's fees. Normally, when you're a higher income earner in the family law, they will say, look, you make more money than your than your significant other. So financially, 
she should be allowed to have proper representation and have her legal fees to be paid for too. Here's the problem. I signed a prenuptial agreement and the prenuptial agreement clearly in all four corners of the document, a total of about 60. We put our signatures on it. We agreed that if we want to argue and go back and forth about the validity of our prenuptial agreement, then we are 100% responsible for paying and covering our own legal fees. That's what the prenuptial agreement states. So therefore, there should not be no discussion about who's paying for legal fees. You follow me? Because the prenup says that if you want to argue about who gets what and what's what, then you're responsible for your own legal representation and you need to pay. Okay? So now, again... I am asking every black father in the city of Atlanta, Charlotte, wherever you are, I also would love to personally invite my brothers, the fruits of Islam, the nation of Islam, all of the black men who have dealt with the family law and the court. So Tyrese is married to Samantha Lee. That's the name of his wife. And they got married on Valentine's Day in 2017 isn't it sad guys that what is so blissful in the beginning ends in this type of knockout drag out fight in the court system in public for the world to see i hate to see that with married people most of them don't know how to iron out their differences it, it's got to be so nasty all the time why is that so tyree's wife was a social worker and he met her in new jersey through mutual friends so back in 2021 january of 2021 samantha took to social media to air out the dirty laundry in the marriage my dear and she said she indicated that she could not stay in the marriage and that you know she had done everything that she could but it's not what everyone says. They've done it all. They've tried it all. They went to counseling, etc. They've talked it out, but nothing um, it can be done. Nothing can be ironed out. Nothing is workable. And so she walked away from the marriage. She left. Because I'm an alpha, because I'm a father, because I'm a celebrity, because I'm a public figure, I don't want nothing to work in my favor for any of those factors. I just want things to be done according to the law. I'm also going to call on my brother, attorney Benjamin Crump, to join me. I have my lawyer named Tanya Mitchell Graham, who is incredible. It's a black woman who was literally disrespected by this judge. His full name sitting on the bench. His name is Judge Kevin M. Farmer. M as in Mary. Judge Kevin M. Farmer, we attempted to get this man thrown off the bench. His case was presented to other judges. They read the transcripts. They seen how he handled himself, all of the races, the fact that we wasn't able to properly present our case. And then he ends up calling my ex-wife a bitch. Yes, he did. He called Samantha a bitch. He said this in the private chambers of his office in front of a black woman named Tanya Mitchell Graham, who's my attorney, in front of other black women that work for Tanya Mitchell Graham's law firm. And he was referring to my ex-wife. Now, listen, we ain't together no more. We have our share of issues, but I have never referred to the mother of my child as a bitch. I have never referred to the mother of my child or my ex-wife as a bitch. To hear this man on the bench wearing a black robe who is supposed to represent the law to refer to my ex-wife and the mother of my child as a bitch, why is he still on the stand? So his case to be thrown off is called we tried to get him recused. We tried to get him thrown off the bench because of his conduct and his unprofessionalism. And then there was a bunch of things pertaining to the outcome of my case that he did that literally illegal. 
So I want to invite all of the press and media, the AJC. I want to invite the Fruits of Islam, all of my black men and fathers that represent the Fruits of Islam, the Nation of Islam, my brothers, all of my Christian black fathers that live in the city of Atlanta. For one, we're going to pray right in front of the court building, and I'm going to go up in there, and we already know he's a racist. And you know what else this man did that was illegal? Everything about the way he conducted himself on that stand. As a judge, he literally got all of my transcripts and my court documents sealed. What does that mean? I fucked up. My conduct was unprofessional. I went, I was abusive with my power. And everything that I said and the way I conducted myself as a judge on the bench, a sitting judge on the bench, the way he conducted himself, he didn't want nobody to see that shit. So he got the case sealed illegally. Why is it illegal? In Atlanta, Georgia, if a, if, a, if a case gets sealed, it needs to be a request from my attorney or her attorneys. And after they make the request to seal the case, then we actually have to go in for a hearing and present why we want the case to be sealed to the judge. And then the judge is supposed to either say yes or no to it. This judge, and his name again, is Judge Kevin M. Farmer. This man is a racist. This man abused his power. This man is a sitting judge in the city of Atlanta in Fulton County Supreme Court. And he referred to my ex-wife and the mother of my child as a bitch. So guys, this looks like it. Tyrese is mad with his ex-wife for obvious reasons. Because of the divorce, it's a messy and contentious divorce. But he's also mad with the judge because he feels as though he wasn't treated fairly. He's mad that this judge allegedly called his ex-wife the B-word. I think he wants to take it further. He wants the Nation of Islam involved. He wants Benjamin Crump involved and all these leaders. So this is, you know, just... Uh, gearing up to, to be something very, very messy. Now, for those of you who have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. It will help my channel. It will help it to grow. Um, you don't have to contribute anything monetarily if you don't want to, but if you choose to, you can go into Super Thanks. It's on the page of the video. Scroll to the left and you will see the thanks and it has a little heart. I greatly appreciate it and thank you in advance. Well, guys, what do you think about this case with Tyrese? Just, he's mad with his ex-wife. He's mad with the judge. How do you think this is going to end? Is he going to have to pay all this money to his ex-wife because he said she wanted money that was not reasonable? Do you think he's going to pay up? Do you think? Do you guys think he's gathering all these leaders in the hopes of trying to unseat this judge? For slanderous remarks about his ex-wife? What do y'all think? How do y'all think this is going to end? Because Tyrese is up in arms. He's mad not only about his divorce. He's mad about this judge calling his ex-wife the B word. Drop your comments. So guys, all the news outlets are now giving a report on Jamie Foxx's condition. They said he's alert. And so the Sun reported that Jamie Foxx's hospitalization came weeks after he allegedly had a breakdown on set. So this was reported on March the 15th of this year. And they reported that production for Fox and Diaz film back in action his first film in nine years had temporarily halted and four people had been fired after jimmy foxes had this meltdown so all this time he has been in the hospital and nick cannon a good friend of his 
came out and said that he is now alert and awake. So if he's now alert and awake, that indicates that maybe he was under sedation or maybe he was in a state of not responding. So it was reported two days ago that Jamie Foxx suffered a minor stroke. In other words, he went to get a checkup after suffering headaches and his doctors discovered that he was suffering from a small intracerebral hemorrhage. In other words, a mini stroke. So guys, I guess we are really at the end of an era, a chapter, if you will, because Don Lemon has hit out at the network that he worked for after his firing. He said it was abrupt. It came after accusations of misogyny and misbehavior. And Don Lemon said he is stunned. He wrote on Twitter saying that he was told by his agent that he was let go. And he said it, there was no warning. So on Monday, Lemon found out that he was fired without warning, without notice, after 17 years of working for CNN. I mean, after 17 years, you would think they would give him at least a heads up, a little warning, a little thanks, but we're not going to be needing your services any longer. But without warning, abruptly. But CNN said not so fast. He was given a chance to meet with management and turned it down so i think this is what got him fired about two months ago so according to the new york times well, cnn fired longtime host don lemon on monday following his short and disastrous run as a morning show host this is according to the new york times a little over two months after he apologized to nikki haley on air, he made an on air comment about the Republican presidential candidate, Nikki Haley, being past her prime. And I guess the powers that be down there at CNN found that very offensive. So now I think they waited like two months to let it die down a little bit, and then they fired him abruptly, without warning. According to Don Lemon, but CNN said, no, that's not true. That is very misleading because he was given the opportunity to meet with management. And he posted it on his uh, Twitter feed. So guys, let that be a lesson to you all. Don't mess with the big wigs that own these networks because you will be fired. They will let it lie down, die down a little bit and you think it's all forgotten. But oh no, they're going to come and they're going to come hard when you least expect it, because they fired him without warning. But we know, we know why he really got fired was the comment that he made about Nikki Haley, because these people got power, let's face it. Nikki Haley and all of them, she was in with Trump, you know, she is supposed to be Trump number one gal. And so when Don Lemon made that statement, pretty much he didn't have a job. Anyway, guys, drop your comments in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button before you leave the video. And subscribe to my channel. Share the video. I will see you guys on the next video. Thank you for watching.